it's family hour. There must be something on. Oh, wow! Candy critters! Oh! Oh, great! It's Monsters, our favorite show. It's starting. Exposed to every stinking, filth-infested alley in the foulest part of town. And for what, of all things? A faith healer. Shh! Mason, the man who owns this house, made his fortune by feeding off of human misery and ignorance. How could you even think of bringing her here? You may be right. But I saw the look in my wife's face before she died. Now I see the same look in my daughter's face. She's all I have left. And you can't save her, can you? If science can't save her, then she is in the hands of God. Oh, that's not good enough for me. Is this the house of the fever man? My name is Mason. Timothy Mason. It's my daughter, you see. Please, I've got to see him. She's dying. You must pie first. Not enough. James, no, Mason. Not for this. Not one cent. Damn you. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. My wedding ring. That's gold. Not enough. Wait, wait, please. That's silver. Solid silver. where the fever man does his work. You seem to be quite an expert. And what exactly is it that he's supposed to do in there? He fights the fevers in there. He's got the crystal. He can call the sickness out. It's true, James. My grandfather used to tell me about the fever men. The fever crystals. They could cure the fevers when nothing else would work. The fever men have been around for hundreds of years. Maybe thousands. And you genuinely believe that? Well, why shouldn't he? Are you the fever man? It's my daughter. Nasty one, isn't it? <laughs> Timothy, she belongs in a hospital. Timothy, you take that little lamb from here now and you might as well go straight to the undertaker's. You are one of the most despicable things I have ever set eyes on. Despicable? And what does that mean? It means something low, like dirt. Excuse me, have we met before? No. The name is Burke. Dr. Burke. <laughs> the name is Boyle. Mr. Boyle. You must be quite a keen observer, Doctor. Most people get to know me quite a bit before they reach that conclusion. James, that's enough. Mason! Please, 
Should I take her inside? By all means. Take her in, take her in. Mason, don't do this. Don't let this trickster rob you. He speaks for himself, not for me. James, perhaps you'd better go. A drink, Doctor. <laughs> it's the finest whiskey available. I always try to pamper myself whenever I can. Mr. Boyle. Don't worry, Mr. Mason. I'll be with your daughter in just a few moments. No, thank you. Let me tell you something, Doctor. I'm a proud man. And the people that make use of my services, despite their humble conditions and surroundings, they're proud. And when you're proud, gratitude can be a terrible burden. That's why I charge high. When they pay my prices for a life, there's no need to be grateful. I'm grateful to no one, and no one's grateful to me. You charge high and pay high. And you'll die content. Please, Mr. Boyle, we're ready. Oh, but I'm not. I swear, you fellows are dressed most elegantly and you talk all elegant, but your manners leave a great deal to be desired. I'm having a conversation here and you're interrupting. And that is very rude, Timothy. I'm sorry, Mr. Boyle. Of course. Whenever you're ready. Can't you see? He's just playing games with us, Mason. He wants to see us crawl. Not a bit of it, Doctor. I just want the simple respect that every working man craves. I think I'm ready now, Timothy. Do you ever pay back your high prices, Mr. Boyle, if the cure doesn't take? I don't quite follow you, Doctor. If the patient dies, do you give the money back? Unlike you medical fellows, my cure has to work. Because the first time I fail, the first time I fail, it will surely be my last. When I fight a fever, Doctor, if I don't kill the bloody thing, it'll take us both. Fever man and patient together. And in case you're interested, it's a great big old sickness in your little girl. A great stinking grandmother of an infection. Come on now, boys, out you go. Since you raised the question, Doctor, do you give back the money when your patients die? No? How despicable. We'll talk about it later, when I've finished with your little girl.
Mason, for the love of God, put a stop to this. Yeah. Can't you see you're being made a fool of? You can't genuinely believe it. I know you can't. No. I believe in it because I have to. Because it's my daughter's only hope. My only hope. Mason, don't you see? Men like Boyle make their fortunes off that kind of hope. He's not in the business of curing the sick. His stock in trade is pleasing lies. You there. You must know from the sounds how it's going. Sounds like Mr. Boyle said. A big, slippery one. I can't let this go on. No! If you open that door, you'll kill them both. Is that what you're afraid of? Or of seeing the truth? My daughter. Fever's back inside her. Burke, I swear to you, if my daughter dies... I didn't say there wasn't any hope, Mr. Mason. You go on upstairs. Mrs. Pierce will make you a nice cup of tea. <laughs> the doctor and I will stay down here and discuss the matter. Now go on. Let's speak plainly, one man to another. I'm dying, and so is she, and you are to blame. Well, how could I? It's a simple fact. Now, you're full of brave talk, but are you really prepared to make good your mistake? Make good? How? It's impossible! Me? Fight that thing? That horror? Wait. Guns. Ah, I'm disappointed in you, Doctor. You're a hypocritical hypocrite. It's all very well to devote your life to healing, but it all appears in a different life when you have to put your life on the line, doesn't it? If I don't, she'll die. Yes. I suppose, I suppose I owe it to you. Yeah. You know, when I'm done with you, you won't have to worry about owing me anything. Just remember what I said. Charge high and pay high, and you'll die content. What do you want me to do? Pick it up. Put it on. 
chain is broken. Don't worry about that. Just touch the broken ends together behind your neck. Yeah, have a drink. No, I don't. Take it. It'll calm you down and maybe it'll loosen you up a bit. Fevers are big and strong, but they're stupid and awkward. They know how to attack, but they're no good at defending themselves. Remember that. And remember that this one's got a, a, a wounded arm. All right. All right. Now go over and kneel by her side. crystal in your hands. It vibrates, doesn't it? Like it's moving. Can you feel it? Good. It does that when a sickness is close. The more you feel it, the bigger the sickness. Now, move your hand slowly down to her legs. That's it. Touch her between the eyes. <laughs> Come on, Doctor. Mix it up. Mix it up. You can feet. Nothing will take it off unless you're dead. Or dying. Mason, wait for me. I... I think not. Please, just wait a minute. Then I won't use the damn thing. That's what I thought I'd do when I got stuck with it. The trouble is, each time you don't use it, you sort of... You sort of fade away. Remember, James, charge high and pay high and you'll die content. I'm content that the price has been paid for my life. Another customer. Now then, you just get this down and I'll handle the rest. I always have. She's such a sweet little angel. She's a sweet little angel. Requiesco 